Okay, this is uh, another video obviously here on YouTube. Um, <clears throat> we've talked about this motherboard before, so there shouldn't really be any surprises here. We've went through it and, you know, had a good old goo at this particular motherboard. Um, anyway, this is a, a an AMD motherboard uh, with a, what's known as a slot A processor. Um, this processor is inserted Sort of say the socket that it's inserted to is in the reverse of a Intel Pentium 2 or original Pentium 3 style cartridge processor, and they called it slot one. AMD called it socket uh, slot A, I should say. Um, anyway, so this particular motherboard has PCI, AGP, um, two two positions for the RAM, um, IDE. There's no SATA on this baby because it's too old. Um, but the reason why I'm showing this machine is more to do with what I use it for. Um, I was trying to get a, a fair few of my older games to work without using emulation. I find the emulation can be very restrictive. I find a virtual box and DOS box, it kind of restricts you to sort of like one brand of video card. Um, when I did use the virtual box from Microsoft a long time ago, it used to default to an S3 Savage as far as I can remember. And that's off the top of my head. Which was good for most things because it's actually a pretty good card and uh, I have a few of them around the place and they're not a bad card to, to be playing with. Um, but when you want to actually mess about with real stuff you're better off using real hardware. And on that topic I really 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 must uh, uh, get out the old Commodore 64 and Amiga A1200 that I have. Um, I know the last day I showed you uh, the Amstrad GX4000. Um, well that's not here, this is here. Anyway, the next card, the next thing we have on the list, which is going into this machine as well, is this particular card. Um, it was originally in a, in a Dell machine, linked up to a Matrix Millennium video card, and this basically gave back DVD playback. Um, back in the day, uh, when DVD playback was a thing on PCs, um, it was very hard to do because the hardware didn't allow playback, and then it was copyright issues and all sorts of stuff preventing playback to happen. So they came out with these particular video cards, which had a, a cinema chip on them. And um, this is a C-Cube cinema chip here. Uh, now, this particular chip was an add-on to your original video card, so you'd have to have a video card and this would be added to it. Um, what would happen then would be that this would use a dynamic overlay to overlay the video of the DVD over your video card's output without the need for a, a sort of a piggyback cable, aka a cable coming from here into the into the other card. Now some of the um, what's the company called Creative Labs video cards um, have that feature where they require the piggyback uh, VGA cable and also some of the original uh, 3D accelerator cards from the likes of Voodoo and um, you know, video logic and that you know basically where you'd have a piggyback cable coming from a VGA socket, you know what a VGA socket looks like, if you're watching this video you must. So basically you have a VGA socket at the back of this, it would piggyback into your VGA card, and then your VGA card will obviously still have its, its VGA... So you'd have your video card, let me show you. You'd have your video card, that's a VGA socket, right? So you have your video card, the output of this would go into this card, and this would have another output on it. Which basically meant that when it was playing back normal 3D, uh, or 2D video or just Windows generally or you're doing something in Windows it was fine it wouldn't do anything just output the data when you're playing back the DVD this chip would kick in and everything would play back in this instance that doesn't need to be done it automatically um, sends the signal back uh, through the actual PCI bus to this particular video card um, now this is the video card that I'm using in it this is a uh, 3DFX um, Voodoo 3 3000 video card um, very nice little car. 60 megabytes of RAM on this baby. Yes, that's 60 megabytes. And I found this to be the best setup to use for a lot of these old games. This for Windows, uh, sorry, this for DirectX 7 playback of games is absolutely perfect. The process has got a good speed, the video card's a very good video card, and uh, this is just something I just threw in anyway. Uh, the sound card is built into this machine. It doesn't need to have any special sound card because we're using Windows uh, 95 or 98. Generally we'll use Windows 98, a uh, second edition because it's the most stable. Um, we've got a, a DVD drive in here, we've got a floppy drive in here, and we've got a, you know, a standard hard drive. I don't know whether it's an 8 gig or 30 gig. We'll, we'll be looking at that in a later video anyway. Um, but uh, so once the machine was set up, um, this was what I discovered to be the best setup to allow me to play back these old games. Old games like, you know, uh, 
I'll try to see if I can see what that. I've, I've installed most of them on the machine anyway at this stage. And um, like Command and Conquer Renegade, actually, would run Command and Conquer Renegade. Um, I don't know if you remember this particular game. I'll show it to you now. Here we are. This is Command and Conquer Renegade. Um, I better not show any of these videos because somebody is going to claim copyright, you know, on these things. So this is Renegade, very good game. Um, really enjoyed this when I was, you know, because I always used to play Command and Conquer. So you know, when this came out, I was like, "Way, look, it's it, it's actually we're actually there on the ground." You know? And the graphics were sparse in the game, but there was they were as sparse as the actual 2D game, the 2D point and click game. Um, so if you're an armchair general, you then start playing this. It was like the 2D version came to life and it was just blew me away. Very good game, um, great fun to play. And I think people still play it online. And I also think there's been a, uh, an upgraded version of it made um, where if there's like, you know, these modders and that, you know, they modded it and made a, a, an updated version of it. Um, but yeah, this will play back on a fine. As you can see in the back here, it'll run in a 16 meg, uh, sorry, geez, there's a 16 meg video card. That's your CD ROM drive, four speed, and um, your. Uh, Hard drive space, the type of uh, RAM it wants, you know, 96 megabytes, the speed of your processor, your operating system, Windows 98 or XP or 2000. Um, so I wanted a machine that would run Windows 98 second edition and would then run games, you know, like this baby. This does the job. Also, as I mentioned before in some of my other videos, um, <clears throat> especially when you're setting up a retro machine, um, you want to put in video cards and you want to put in a, you know, network cards and sound cards that are basically in them automatically installed by the operating system or have drivers that are very, very easy to get. A lot of times people make video cards, like, make DVD cards like this one here, where <coughs> there's just no driver. Where do you get the driver for this thing, you know? Um, just can't be done. Turns out there's a built-in driver uh, for DVD playback with this card because the operating system supports it. Um, the operating system supports it uh, directly because it was one of the original supported uh, DVD video cards for the system. Um, what I mean is for the operating system that is, not for this particular PC box because this is something I made up. These are the boxes, some of the systems that I used to make up back in the day, I used to make up this particular specification and people were very happy. The Voodoo card I put in a lot of machines um, but with a very very short lived time. I eventually upgraded most people's 16 meg video cards to the NVIDIA MX4440 uh, and they were all then playing, uh, let me see what was the name of the game, Medal of Honor, yeah, and they were all landing on the beaches and they absolutely loved it because this machine here would still run that and it would still run the more modern operating systems so they had something that, okay, cost a few quid originally to build but at least they had, you know, upgradability, uh, not upgradability, well, they had upgradability, yes but they had sort of future proof to some extent like even at the moment, the current system that I run uh, I have 16 gigabytes of RAM in the two main systems that I run I was told at the time, you're crazy to put that another RAM into it and I said, no, I don't think so the only part of it that's crazy was the price 156 English pounds for the RAM uh, two years ago, which I've seen recently coming down to about 56 pounds, which is still fairly expensive, but half the price of what I paid for it. And um, so a lot of things do come down. Mm -hmm. But what it does allow you to do is it does allow you to say, well, look, um, you know, I've got, you know, what it does allow you to, what it does allow you to do is continue to use the existing machine, um, and. Uh, <clears throat> It means that with the existing machine, with the RAM that you have, upgrading stuff like the video card and all that uh, is a little bit easier because all you do is change the video card rather than changing the whole system. Um, but of course, that's DDR3 RAM and that machine, and the future of RAM is you know changing all the time, and it'll probably be DDR4 or DDR5 or whatever you know. It's got to change because these things don't stay static. I'm just actually kind of amazed that people still build their own machines. Uh, and I'm also still amazed that building of machines is still something that's done. Um, I'm quite amazed at that and I'm very happy about that because I'm the sort of person who likes a keyboard and a mouse. Um, would love to have a touch screen on my Windows 10 machine as well, I have to say, but having the three of them together would be great. Where you turn the machine on, you just you know hit the screen and things go along. And then you can go back to your, your, your keyboard and mouse. Um, so I'd be a big fan of that sort of technology. Um, <clears throat> next thing here that is, as I was saying, you know, this is a standard network card that's automatically detected by Windows 98, which is dead handy. Um, this is dead handy because it means that you have that installed in the machine, 
you install Windows 95 or 98 and uh, what that allows you to do then is you know automatically go onto your network and download your drivers off your external hard drive or wherever particular place you have them and um, so it gives you a lot of flexibility using you know as i said before parts that are you know automatically detected by the operating system you wouldn't have to have the voodoo card necessarily detected by the operating system but it is detected in 98 I think text it all right and uh, with a basic driver but there are people out there who are still making video drivers for these would you believe uh, and uh, getting a bit more speed out of them so you know it's not that hard to find drivers for the, for the video card and um, so uh, that's basically it that's an overall view of this particular system and um, ideal for running DirectX 7 video games and um, what we will do now I suppose is we'll just uh, I'll just put the cards in the machine put it back together put the cover on it and uh, you know you might as well watch me as I'm doing that. Um, what we'll do now is we'll stop this video and we'll I'll reset up the camera and I'll continue on and we'll upload it as a separate video. But we'll show you uh, just putting the cards back in the machine. You might be interested and you might not. Won't take long to do anyway. But uh, we'll get through it pretty quick. Alright, thank you.